Okay, good day everyone, or actually good evening. Hmm, I guess this microphone is a little in the way. Hmm, oh, should I move it? Yeah, should be fine like this. I can hear myself on YouTube, so I guess we can get going. Hmm, today's moderator is Kshaku. His nickname is right here, somewhere here, yeah. And if you have any questions uh, related to the live stream or not related to the live stream, just ping Kshaku either on YouTube chat, on IRC, and he will make sure that the question will get to me. Now, uh, that being said, I'm, well, as I mentioned before on the live streams, I'm probably going to mix up a little how I do questions in that, that I will, during the live stream, I will answer questions which are related to the topic of the live stream, related to what I'm doing. However, the questions which are not related to that, to the live stream, to the topic, will go either at the beginning of the live stream before I even get started or at the end of it after I'm already finished with the topic. Yes, cool. So, um, oh, by the way, if you're on IRC, you can just use exclamation mark Q to, instead of uh, pinging Shaku, that works also. We have a bot which actually takes the question and puts it in our magical backend server. So today's topic is going to be 
networking over sound cards. And uh, I don't mean using cables, not using um, air or and, you know sound waves and VR. Uh, that's also doable, by the way, and there are both like commercial applications for that and uh, more hackish ac um, applications for that. But I'm not going to um, focus on that today. I'm going to do audio um, as in signal over cable. And um, the reason I'm doing it is uh, purely for fun. It's actually something I wanted to do for a long time, but you know. I never actually got to it, and now I finally got to it, and uh, I've uh, got it running. Uh, it was, I decided it's a little too, too much uncharted territory for me to actually just do it live and hope that everything would work. So, so yeah, I've actually done it, got it up, uh, up and running. So I should be able to tell you how it works and uh, yeah, rewrite it from scratch basically today on the live stream. Now. Um, yeah, there, as I mentioned, there's probably no reason to do it. The one thing which comes to my mind is actually if you want to exfiltrate data from something which doesn't have a real network card or a serial port or you don't have any interface, then, then yeah, you can either use the display if the device has it. Uh, I've written a blog post some years ago uh, about that on my blog. Uh, uh, look for light suck, as in like you know, a sack of light. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, or you can use maybe the audio output and try to treat it as a kind of a modem. Now, um, what to expect today? Basically, do expect um, a lot of Python as usual. I mean, it's always Python, right? And on my channel, uh, expect some signal processing, but that's not going to be terribly um, terribly difficult because I'm going for a digital signal. I will not be doing analog signal and that's um, mainly because, well, there is no reason to. The connection between my sound cards is just too good to even bother doing uh, analog signal. Now, analog signal is actually a little better in the terms that um, it has, it's easier to find, um, oh, I got a donation. Thank you very much, Sebastian. So, um, yeah, uh, the analog signal is basically less error prone. It's easier to do, um, to actually send the signal over a noisy wire or no noisy, I don't know, like, you know, radio signal. Now, a digital signal requires a better medium and yeah, in my case, that's actually the case. So the, the signal I will be going for will be pretty much uh, digital. Uh, well, not fully. It will go over an analog medium and it will be, but but yeah, it's uh, it will look like uh, you know standard square wave basically. So uh, before we get to that topic, let's go through some standard updates I usually have. Mm, okay, so let's switch to desktop, and let's. So okay, I already mentioned. Uh, do I have this turned on? Yes, I do. Uh, Kshaku is my moderator today, and this is his uh, website. So check it out if you didn't haven't seen it before. Now, mm, sorry, uh, okay, so apart from that, there is a couple of things I wanted to let you know. First of all, uh, there is a conference in Poland which uh, is called the Poning Conference and Security Poning Conference, and the third edition will happen in November. Now, the conference is actually mostly in Polish, but being said, we do have uh, simultaneous translators who do translate from Polish to English. And there's a call for papers open already, so you can go to the website if you have anything, any fun talk um, prepared, then, then yeah, totally let us know. Uh, the conference itself is in November, as I mentioned, and but yeah, we decided to do a call for papers a little earlier earlier this year, so it's already on the way. I guess I'm going to give you a link here and there to the, to the website. Here we go. In case you're interested. Uh, all the details are both in Polish and in English on the website. Okay, let me maybe move to the tool. Now, um, yes, uh, this is in German. You probably might see it's in German, but um, the important part here is that on 18th of April, that's what, in three weeks, I'm going to be in uh, southern Germany. 
in um, in Glorstadt und war um, sorry und bis Technische Hochschule in Glorstadt and uh, I'm going to give a lecture where basically I talk about zip file format uh, called the 10,000 security pitfalls of a zip file format it's a uh, I've done this talk, well, not really this talk, I've done a similar talk in Polish a couple of years back, and I've actually got some more more fun stuff to talk about, so I decided to make like a version two of my zip talk and um, put all I know, basically make like a ultimate hacker guide to the zip file format, enumerating all the security um, problems that it has and things which well, not the format itself even, but the implementations that's implemented. It's, it's a surprisingly common format, by the way, and used like everywhere around. So yeah, if you're in Germany, um, then you might be interested. Uh, you do have to register, though. It's free, but you do have regis to register because uh, the, I don't think there is a lot of space in the room. So, you know, first come, first served. Uh, after registering, of course. Now. Well, uh, no, the registration is first come, first serve, sorry. I'm going to give you a link to this as well, in case you are near server in Germany. Here we go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is from yesterday. Uh, a vulnerability which is, um, well, not really called, but on the blog, the blog post title is Total Meltdown? Question mark. And it's a, it turned out that the patches for Meltdown on Windows actually introduced a really, really super bad bug, like a local privilege escalation, basically. And you could exfiltrate all the data from the system. And yeah, it's, it's really bad. Um, I'm going to give you a link. It's a fun read. It's a simple bug. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a one bit bug, basically. That's, that was the problem, one bit. Do check it out. It's uh, it's amazing. Okay, before we get uh, to this, I do have a couple of more things. Uh, first of all, oh, I'm going to brag about uh, stuff. First of all, uh, last week the stream didn't happen, right? Because I was on Insomni Hack on the CTF in Geneva, and we actually got second place, and we got these fancy silver coins, like. Um, yeah, we got eight of them, and each coin is actually, I believe, um, 170 grams of silver. So that's pretty cool. And I'm quite happy if, about the second place. We we weren't able to actually win this time. You know, we won four years, one after, like consecutively, basically four years in a row. And this time we got uh, owned by Beat Sleep Pwn Repeat, which is an amazing team. And uh, congrats to these guys for basically... Um, for, yeah, for winning. So well done. The third place uh, went to P4, which is another Polish team, so I'm also super happy for, for these folks. Cool. Apart from that, I did get this book on the conference, Serious Cryptography, um, published by No Starch Press and actually written by uh, Jean-Philippe Omasson, who is, uh, I guess, a really fam famous cryptographer in Switzerland, um, probably like not only in Switzerland. And uh, the best thing about it is I actually got his signature. Haha. -ha. I'm super happy about it. So yeah, uh, thank you, Jean-Philippe. Now, um, I actually was on a training with uh, that uh, Jean-Philippe was giving some time ago. And yeah, like, uh, this guy's amazing. Cool. Now, do I have anything? Oh yeah, uh, there's going to be a mission today, and you know, like the CTF-like task which I'm giving to you at the end of the live stream, like when the live stream ends, then you get a new mission, new task to solve. And today, today's one is going to be about blockchain. So if you're thinking about hacking blockchain or just getting to know um, it, there's, there will be a rather simple task related to blockchain, so totally check, check it out and stay until the end. And yes, this is everything from my list of the news I should give today. So, we can get, um, oh, I guess we can check if there are any questions. And if there are any questions, then, um, yeah, I will get, uh, I want to basically start the topic of the stream around 15 past eight. And we still have four minutes um, for questions. 
Uh, okay, so the question. Oh, I actually can do this. So let's do this. So we can see the question here as well. It will show over in a, in a second. Yeah, here we go. Was it passed or is it too early? I'm. I'm afraid I do not have the context for, for your question. Sorry. And the next question also from Przemek. Uh, do you think about uh, what do you think about the fact that in the beginning of April, the new feature update for Windows 10 will appear? Uh, oh no, I will have to reset my OBS sound card setting again. That's what I think. This is what comes to my mind because every creator's update or whatever they call it update, I need to reset my um, open broadcast uh, setting. But it's uh, it's pretty cool that they do frequent updates. That's not bad. Costa uh, Rubica writes, uh, what do you think about Anonymous? Who are they and do you appreciate their activities? I don't know too much about them. I didn't follow them too much. I'm um, I'm a fan of uh, uh, guy Fax mask they are using and their videos. It has like a hacker vibe to them. Now what they do is usually uh, a little on the gray side of the law. So I wouldn't. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure about that actually. And. Yeah, but I didn't uh, didn't see what else are these uh, these folks up to. So, mm, so an idea. I didn't really follow them. Okay, Wukash writes: uh, Does network card use Fourier transform to send data via analog signal, or is it uh, specific to sending sound? No, but specific to sending sound actually. On the the network card, as far as far as I know, you know the the standard Ethernet one uses basically a digital signal. Um, yeah, so a similar signal to what I will be using today, but even a little more digital. Is it possible that in the future we will need regular firmware security patches? Wait, 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 wait. We now need se regular security patches for firmware. The fact that we are not getting them, that is the, the like totally bad thing. We should be getting them. Firmware is in a bad state. so. Yeah, um, yeah, we need them. We need them now, basically, and uh, we need more focus on the firmware security as well. But it's kind of, you know, it's a territory which is just beginning to be charted, where more and more security researchers are going and poking their nose into uh, various firmwares and discovering vulnerabilities. But I don't believe, like, for example, secure, secure development lifecycle thing is, uh, is actually used while developing firmware. So. Uh, yeah, firmware has to catch up, basically, to, to the modern security standards. Have you heard about the new bug in Intel CPUs? It's in the uh, new paper, branch uh, scope, a new side channel attack on directional branch predictor. I didn't, actually. Thank you. I will note it down. Hmm. Okay. No, I didn't. I didn't even see the paper, so thank you for letting me know, Przemek. And from L underscore underscore Q, what do I think about Miniflux? What was Miniflux? I've heard that name. Um, no, seriously, what's Miniflux? Minimalistic feed reader. Oh, that thing. Uh, yeah, uh, we chatted about it on the last stream. I didn't test it yet. And all honesty, like last week I spent in Geneva, so yeah. Mm. Should we develop more complex embedded systems with more security features? Um, yeah, security features are a good thing, as far as I I can tell. Well, it's not really you know about security features, about writing secure code or having the proper tools to be able to write secure code, which isn't always uh, the case. And uh, yeah, we still should do a lot of work related to that. Okay, it's 15 past, so I guess we can get going. Um, I'm going to hide the questions for now. And uh, let's uh, let's talk about, you know, um, sound card networking. So let's start with how do I have this thing connected? And now the easy, uh, the easy drawing, basically, is uh, I have two computers. Um, so one computer is here, both are PC class computers with a default sound card which was already on the motherboard. And uh, one is called 
demon, uh, demon, and the other is called Elias. If you were on my last Polish stream, you already met Elias because that's the PC where I have uh, have a five inch um, floppy drive in. Now, um, all, both of these have actually like Realtek chipset mm, sound cards. Uh, different sound cards though, and um, I have them connected like this one uh, So there's the speaker output and there's the line in mm, On this side and there's the same scenario basically here. So SPK for speaker hmm. What happened to my line? Yeah, okay, here we go, and I have it connected well you know, no, there's absolutely no magic here, like this speaker to line input and um, the other speaker to the other line input. Now, is this a safe connection to do? Um, it probably is, but I wouldn't give my guarantee on it. I, I'm i basically not using the sound card, so I don't mind if they blow up, mm, but that's my reasoning. Now, mm, the thing here is that you shouldn't connect it to a speaker to a microphone port because the microphone port is also giving up some, you know, um, some voltage to basically power the microphone, uh, I think. But uh, that's not the case for, for line in, which just gets signal. So this should be a safe-ish connection. And oh, an important disclaimer. I actually don't know anything about, you know, electrical engineering. So. Everything I'm going to say is like from a, about that is from like a total newbie's perspective. Keep that in mind um, and don't do don't do stupid stuff which I'm going to do today. Perfect. Now, mm, yeah, and this is how it's connected. Now um, I've set it up like this. I've um, then I encountered two biggest problems. The two biggest problems with what I'm going to do today is volume and uh, actually getting the sound card working on Linux, which uh, the second thing I spent two hours on and it turned out that I just had to add my user to Apple's audio group. Well, that's, that was quite embarrassing. Now, uh, getting the volume right is just like, after you implement everything, just play with it and it might get, uh, might be, um, well, you might get the setting eventually. Cool, now, mm, since I did have to play with the volume and my code didn't work, I was thinking about, hey, how about, um, like, yeah, it wouldn't it be great if we have a program or a device where, which I could actually, you know, put here, somewhere here in the middle and see the signal which is generated. Now, wouldn't it be great if like the humanity inv invented such a device? It turned out that we did. It, it's called an oscilloscope and uh, yeah and uh, I did have to do some modifications to actually get it running but uh, yeah we have an oscilloscope today there we go now the way it's connected and this is actually live so you can see my hand here uh, let's go here um, I've, what you normally would do is you take a cable, you would, you know, just take off isolation and hook into the wires. Uh, because I didn't want to really destroy my cables, I went a different route. I launched KiCad and I ordered a PCB. I made a PCB and then I ordered it, then the PCB is like this. Uh, let's hope you can see something. Can you actually focus your camera on this? Mm -hmm. Uh, the camera doesn't like focusing so close, it seems. Oh. No? Okay. Um, maybe like this. Well, uh, you, sh you should have it in focus here. So basically, you put a jack, audio jack socket here, you put an audio jack, jack socket here, and here you put three, three pins. Um, yeah, so I made this in KiCad. I actually had to design my own, like, uh, part for the for the sockets I ordered and then I had it made in, in pcbway.com and they actually sent it made it and uh, sent it to me in a week so I'm quite happy about that and uh, yeah and then mm, then I learned an, a magical thing as you can see there are actually five holes here right so what's up with that I mean in an audio cable you have uh, well in a normal audio cable you have three wires right one is the common ground 
um, one is for the left channel and one is for the right channel. Why do you need five, five holes basically in a PCB? So turns out that this is, uh, yeah, um, this is the audio socket I'm using. And uh, it's pretty cool because two of the, of the um, pins here on, the, on this are actually used to detect, did you insert a connector here or, um, and then they are not crossed otherwise if the, uh, not shorted and if you take it out then the legs be, become shorted between themselves. So that's a really cool feature. I actually didn't know about that until this came and I took my multimeter and I started playing around because I couldn't, I wanted to figure out why does it have like five pins instead of just three. Um, yeah, and then after some soldering, I've got a, a couple of these made. This is already a soldered one. And uh, yeah, another one here. And connected this to the oscilloscope, which which is uh, which you saw on the left of uh, myself. So going back here, um, you can see, uh, sorry, where is it? Yeah, I, I guess this is going to work. You can see here, like above my mouse, that um, it's already connected. I already hooked it up. So I have each cable going, I have four cables, right? Two for each um, PCB. And each of them uh, are connected to my um, to my oscilloscope. And I probably just messed up the settings really badly. You, you might be, uh, see me struggling a lot with oscilloscope because I don't really use it that frequently. Uh, but yeah, we'll get to, to using it eventually, actually. Now, uh, one more thing which the, mm, which this adds to is this adds to actually noise. As in, without this, the signal is a little bit clearer, but which is, which is obvious when you look at how badly I designed it. Um, but, but yeah, uh, it will work for, for my thing, so I don't care. Cool. Mm, I guess I don't need this for a moment to to be here. I'm going to because I, I still need to write some code before we even get to playing with the oscilloscope, but we will get there eventually. So uh, yeah, mm, two libraries which I'm going to actually use today. Uh, this is the important thing to oh before we get there. Actually, I got this link from a couple of people. The Linux kernel actually has something called amateur radio. AX25, which is basically a modem-like protocol for the sound card, and you can just use it right off, uh, you know, right off the bat. And I'm not going to use it because, uh, well, first of all, I prefer a custom thing, and second of all, um, I learned about this uh, really late in the process. But it it is there, so you might want to check it out. I'm again going to give you the links on the on the channels. Now the libraries I'm going to use, first one is called PyTune. Um, okay, so yeah, this is basically a Python wrapper for tune and tap. What is tune and tap? Because that's a, um, this, this basically boils down to what I want to do today. What I want to do today is I want to be able to go on IRC, you know, our chat, using the, uh, the sound card. And um, to do that, I actually need to have TCP IP running over, over the sound card. And to have TCP IP running, I do need to somehow hook into the, mm, well, the TCP IP stack of the operating system to be able to send IP packets and receive them. And turns out operating systems, modern operating systems have something like that exactly for mm, the stuff I'm doing. It's called the Tune and Tap mm, interfaces. Now, uh, Tune is actually for IP tunnels, so this works on the IP level, and uh, TAP works on Ethernet level, Ethernet level, if I uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's like super easy to use, basically. So yeah, uh, just feel free to download this library. I am going to be using it today. Later on, when I go already get uh, get some signal between uh, the things running. So this is one thing, and the other thing is. Mm, is basically the PY uh, ALSA. ALSA is the low level driver for sound cards on, for actually sound, not sound cards, but for sound on Linux and, or module, maybe module is a better word than a driver. And yeah, this is how I'm going to use the sound card basically through ALSA. Uh, actually, both of these libraries make, that's really easy to use. 
So here we go, uh, like the sound card and the, the everything. And I guess I'm going to give you a ToonTap interface tutorial as well, but um, it's related to how do you set up it manually, and I'm not going to do it manually. I'm just going to do it uh, programmatically from Python. Cool. So uh, having this out of the way, we can finally get to write some code. So the first code I'm going to write is basically going to be Mm. It's going to be, well, uh, how do I call it? Let's call it sound net.py. Sound yeah. Okay. The first code I, I need to write is I need to basically set up the sound card, just connect to the sound card, open the sound card so I can send something, like send a signal, and then you can try playing with a oscilloscope to actually get it. Uh, so I'm going to import uh, the, the, the Python ALSA thing, so ALSA audio. And uh, uh, let me make the font a little bigger for you. Cool. Now, um, it's important to basically um, think about what will be the settings for the sound card. We will get there in a second, I guess. So uh, we need to have two devices, right? One device for the input which is the line in and the second device for the output, which is the speaker. And the speaker, we my cables are actually stereo cables, so I have two channels on each cable, but I'm not going to use both channels. I'm going to just use one channel for the simplicity of it. And if you want to play with it later on, then you can uh, easily use the, the second channel later on. So um, also audio PCM and uh, also audio, I need to do the PCM capture. PCM capture is going to be my line in, right? And before I get to do anything more, I actually want to be able to test it on my on my servers, right? On my Linux machines. So to do that, I need to connect to them. Mm, I actually need a script which sends, takes the my sound Python command and, and well, runs it on on another machine, basically sends it to, an, to another machine. So let's create this as well. And then bash, echo, uh, whatever, uh, scp, soundnet.py to, uh, this is one device, and this is the second device, uh, to run, to fight one, yeah, uh, good. So rather easy script. I'm going to have terminals which are, yeah, okay, perfect. Sorry. Now I'm, I'm going to keep this terminal open somewhere here. I ob obviously have network connections to both machines, by the way, so that, you know, I can, I can interact with them. Later on, I could actually break the network connection of one of the machines, but that doesn't, well, doesn't matter really. Cool, um, SSH, let's, uh, let's do all the experiments on alias perhaps. So, let's do, yeah. okay, here we go. Um, Pythons, uh, oh, b before we get there actually, I do have some, yeah, sorry, I need to get my notes somewhere here as well. Okay, so I'm going to, I guess, show you my configuration. Mm. First of all, this is my configuration for the, for the volume. Uh, as you can see, this is my sound card. Now I have master at the full volume, then headphones are muted. Uh, front is uh, the full volume. I think that's the same. Well, well, this is actually the you know the output I'm connected to, and this is the master volume. Um, then I have this muted surround. I have um, I don't know why it's not muted, and and all the other style. I, I don't know why this is not muted. I could mute it. Maybe I will later mute it as well. Uh, when we go to the capture, we actually have um, the capture set to 35, and this is like an empirical. Mm, empirical value I I said and, and surprisingly also when I change the digital it affects how the signal is generated I don't know why 
maybe these are like related or maybe these are this is just like how the drivers work and everything else is zero is basically muted so this is my setting now um, yeah um, let's just run my sound net thingy and yeah as you can see it actually could create the object so uh, before i guess I, I start interacting with the object i do need to um, set all the settings here so first of all i want to set channel i, I want only one channel right so set channels one uh, as i mentioned i do not care about stereo today i only care about one channel i'm going to do it mono but you could actually yeah you could tweak it and get two times faster the bandwidth now the bandwidth is going to be terrible and uh, i will explain like why in a second but yeah mm. Yeah, I guess I'm going to explain right now. Uh, the number I'm writing here is one of the standard numbers which you use for for a sound card. And I guess it's like either 48K or 40, uh, 4K or 22, something like this. And this is the amount of um, samples per second. No, yeah, the amount of samples per second, the frequency basically of how fast are you transmitting changing the signal on the wire and the highest value right now is this value and uh, that's not a lot that's uh, if if and this is not happening but if i would get one bit per sample and again this is not happening um i would be able to transfer at most 48,000 bits per second which is six kilobytes and i d i cannot um cannot count that the signal going from through like everything in the sound card then going through the wire to the um, audio chipset in and all the you know uh, analog to digital converters in the second sound card which has its own clock um, I cannot trust that it will maintain a signal which is the width of one, one sample this is not um, cannot happen so I probably will well I will have to use my bits one bit is of information is actually going to be uh, several samples wide and um, apart from that i do need to um uh, i'm i'm not going to send uh, my signal as you know well i'm not going to grab you know one byte of data and then say just send just eight bits that's not going to work i will have to have some headers footers i will have to encode the uh, bytes in a specific way so so yeah um it's going to be slow okay and this is the sampling i guess i'm going to call this like uh, samples per second and I, I guess i can try to switch later to 48k and uh, i'm pretty sure my sound card isn't going higher than uh, 48k by the way that's pretty that's pretty high already for sound cards you know, this isn't a modem, right? The, this isn't a, a device which is meant to do this. This is just something which is supposed to output sound to your speakers. Cool. Now, um, set format, and we we need to set the format for the samples. How do we tell the sound card what how to set the signals? And you can do it in several ways. Uh, you can do like eight bits, uh, like eight bit of values, uh, sixteen bits of values. It can be signed, unsigned or it can be floats for example i'm going to go for 16 bit unsigned uh, sorry 16 bit signed actually with zero in the middle uh, at least i hope the zero will be in the middle also audio and pcm format um yeah signed 16 bits little engine okay and the last thing i need to do is uh, set pu this is actually um, how many samples at once do I want to get from the sound card? And I, I guess I want to like get this many. Let's just call it. Uh, uh, yeah, sounds good. Period. Okay. Sweet. And yeah. Um, I actually need to do basically the same thing for my output, right? So out. Yeah. Again, one channel. Uh, no, no, not capture though. Uh, 
yeah, I just want output. This is the default output, by the way. And all the other settings are the same. So I'm going to leave it like this. And now just to check that I'm actually receiving any data at all, I'm going to do print, uh, this is going to end badly. Um, now was it read? I think it was read. Uh, I'm going to check in my notes quickly. Yeah, yeah, let's just read. So this should read the 1000 samples worth of data. And uh, yeah, I need to save it, run this, hope that there are no exceptions, and run this. And it did get some data. Now, um, if we start looking at this, this is, uh, well, well, this is OXFFE8, which is minus one, mi minus 20, minus 30, something like that, right? So not a lot. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, near zero. And uh, yeah, this is, I guess, the moment where we can turn on the oscilloscope to, to check if the signal is actually around zero right now. So let's do it. Let's do this. And uh, let me just tweak the settings. So first of all, let's change the, yeah. let's change this to one volt. The scale, the uh, vertical scale is set to one volt for the yellow channel. I'm doing the same for the blue channel, then I'm resetting the positions for both of them. And um, what you can see is you can see that basically the, the yellow line is on zero and the, um, the blue line is around two volts, but it's constant. So this is where the, the like origin of the signal is for, for the blue. But, uh, but that's not a problem for us. It's, it can be anywhere, basically. Cool. Um, so yeah, it's around zero. So the data we are gathering is fine, which uh, which is cool. So okay, now we need to try to transmit some data and uh, get some and see if we can get the data. And we need to actually encode this in in a way. So how am I going to structure my signal? Um, the Standard digital signal, as you know, is basically you have a line and if there's a one, you go high and if there's a zero, you go low, right? And another one and yeah, so this is a standard digital signal. Now, how do you know, uh, like, for example, if you have two ones, right? So if you have two ones, you get something like this. And how do you know that this is actually two ones? Maybe it's just like a really long signal. Uh, single one bit. You don't really know because um, usually apart from having a signal like this, you also have a, uh, you also get a, um, a clock, right? So another signal which basically tells you which which goes somewhere like on another cable and is like um, peak here and it says that okay when, when the change is detected um, the clocks can be differently, but let's go with this, okay? Uh, do read the value, and this is basically your bit. And then it changes again somewhere here, so you know that, um, yeah, it changed, therefore I need to read the value, and I get a 1. And then we go here, and it goes up, the clock goes up again, and we know that, okay, it changed, so we need to read the value, and it's 1 for us. And we go here, and it changes again, so we read the value here. This is basically how, how it works. Now, um, I do have two wires, so I could uh, potentially send a clock over one wire, or I and I could, you know, send the signal over the second wire because I have um, well two channels, left channel and right channel. I can one can be used for clock, and the second can be used for um, for the signal. Another way to do it is I can just assume that both the sound cards, when they mean um, like. Uh, or the PCs actually, when they mean 0 0.0001 second, then that's actually, um, they will be precise in the measuring of that data. So, but that, uh, from my experience, that usually ends up badly and missing some bits. So I wouldn't like to go there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go a third way of incorporating the clock into the signal, uh, just using the fact that this is an analog signal, right? And to do this, I'm going to cheat a little. And this isn't proper signal design by any means, but it, it will work for today. Um, this is zero. And as I mentioned, I'm using s uh, signed uh, values, which means um, 
well, it can go, you know, to the plus side or it could go to, to the bottom, to the minus side. So I'm going to keep the signal here. And if the value jumps up, then uh, it means it's a one. And then it will jump down and again be for a certain period of time on, on, the, on the zero signal, right? Uh, zero as in like common ground, whatever you want to call it. And then if I want to encode a zero, I'm going to go down with a signal. So this is going to be a zero. And then I go will go up again and spend some brief moment on, on a pause. And having this pauses here, so this is a, actually a pause, right? Um, will mean that uh, I can detect it on the other side as, okay, the bit is ended and expect another bit to be sent in a second. So, and I hope to keep this poses rather, rather small and maybe the bits a little larger, like more samples. I'm going to use more time, more samples for, for this signal than for the poses, but maybe I will make them equal because why not? I mean, let's see what works. Uh, so this is where I'm going to encode the, um, basically the clock into the signal. It's not the best way to do it probably. And I'm probably losing some time with all these poses here. And I could think of some encoding, like for example, if there is a one and then I get a zero, the pause isn't really needed, right? Because the pause here would be, it would be great to, if I have one, 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 to be able to distinguish between the ones. But if I have one and a zero, I don't really need the pause. But I'm not going to go into these micro optimizations yet. And I'm just going to um, basically use this kind of signal. So, okay. Now um, I'm going to use threading for a lot of stuff today. So let's do threading. Um, let me think if I... I probably need uh, will need any uh, some other stuff as well. But oh, I, I will totally need struct to be able to decode the data. Uh, so, um, one thread is going to be the sound card for reading, receiving data from the sound card. So receiving data from the line in uh, of whatever the other device is going to send. So, um, yeah, so this is going to be my one thread. Then I will have another thread, which is sound card for sending data. And to actually do that, I will need Q or Quewe, however you want to pronounce this. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Quewe, but no, it's Q. Mm. So I'm going to create, yeah. Um, oh, right. Uh, no, that's fine. And uh, let's let's uh, start with sending the data. So um, to send the data, I basically need to... Um, Oh, you know what? I'm going to create an event, like a global event called the end to be able to know where and when to close the threads. I probably want to do a proper shutdown too. Today, I don't usually do proper shutdowns I call, you know, code um, on my live streams, right? But, uh, but yeah, today I do need to do it. So if uh, this event is unset by default, this event ha hasn't happened, but when this event will happen, then I will actually have to, um, I will actually have to to end my thread. So while um, the end didn't happen yet, so the end uh, was it? I think it's not set. Yeah, it's set. Uh, while not while the event hasn't happened yet, do some stuff. You know what? I'm probably going to need time as well. Okay. Uh, then try to see if there is any any data in the sending queue. Where's my sending queue? I don't have a send queue. So send queue. Mm, this is the query I need to create. Now, wh what's a queue? A queue is basically a list which is thread safe. Ta-da! That's it. And I'm using threads, so I want thread safe stuff, basically. I want to check if any data has arrived. So I'm going to try to, uh, let me actually open. I usually code with documentation, as you know. So Python query. No, seriously, this is what it says. It says Quora. Uh, yeah, we can hide this. And yeah, let's just look here. Mm. Show me. Yeah, got it. 
so let's try to get data. So data is, this is the data, the packet of data which is going to be sent out. Cool, now we get uh, send queue, get, and we block, uh, we, I guess we can block, we can block for how long? We want to block for 0.1 second. And if, uh, if this doesn't work, there is no data, it will just throw an exception that there is no data, um, like an empty exception, and, um, and that's fine. So accept empty. Uh, oh, that's clearly empty, I think. Uh, then it's, it's fine, like, just continue. Uh, why am I doing this if I just continue here? Because I want to check, I want to recheck every, this amount of time, like every 100 milliseconds, that uh, I need to exit the thread. So now I have basically a pretty safe way to get the data, but uh, assuming that I get the data, I need to send it. So I'm just going to call a function, which I, I will call like um, sound card send data and data. I'm not going to do it in this function. Yeah. So I'm going to create another function called sound card send data and I'm not going to do anything yet uh, because I want to span this thread. So uh, these are the threads I want to span today. Sound card receive and sound card send. So for th and actually that's th func like function do uh, th equals let's see maybe th handles another uh, another list for handles of the threads which I'm creating threading thread uh, target is equal to whatever the th func is and uh, daemon do I want to yeah let's let's set the daemon to true. So uh, daemon basically means that if I'm creating a thread and I press Control C, if the daemon is equal is true, then it will close the main thread, and that will force all the other daemon threads to exit as well. Uh, by default, de the daemon is not set, and um, in that case, if I press Control C, I just kill the main thread, but all the other threads which are not daemons are are still running there. And uh, th, uh, yeah, let's just start it. So the thread is already um, working and I can add the handle to it here. Th. Okay, perfect. Uh, I guess I want some feedback, right? So print sound code sound, yeah. Started and the same thing for receiving. The receiving is actually going to be pretty similar. So while not, while don't end the Hmm. Yes, yeah. Here we go. While don't end it, I don't know, sleep time sleep. I'm going to change this with, with some real code later on. Okay, so I started all the threads when they are working, and now I press Control C. So let's do try. Mm, I don't know. Pass. Except I know. Uh, while true do. Time sleep. Ten milliseconds this time. Except key. Keyboard interrupt is the you know exception which is sent when you do Control C in Python. So you have Python and you do Control C, it will do a keyboard interrupt. So this is exactly what I'm going for here. And yeah, I'm just going to I know pass like exit this while loop after Control C is pressed. And now I want to actually close the the threads correctly. So to close the threads correctly, I need to do, um, well, I need to set the event which I created before, right? So the end set. Now it's uh, it's set and I want to wait for the threads. Do I want to wait, wait for all the threads? I don't know. I'm, I totally want to wait for some threads. So yeah, let's try, let's maybe do wait for all the threads. Uh, th join join basically means wait for the thread to finish and continue execution so i want to wait for the first thread and when it finishes i want to exit and then if the second thread isn't done by by then i want to wait for it to an exit uh, done perfect mm, and i guess i should be also destroying the interfaces here but i didn't uh, i'm not sure if i actually have to 
Hmm. I don't know. Do I have to? Let's see later. Cool. So this should already do something. So let's send it and let's see if it at least somewhat works. Uh, right. I forgot to. Yeah. This is my mistake. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, I pressed Control C, but it did wait for the threads to exit. So this is, I guess, the proper-ish way you you could handle sane exiting of threads. So given that we already have this, now what we can do is we can... Um, do we have the send queue? Yeah, we do have the send queue. So I'm going to... Uh, just for the purpose of testing. And uh, so I'm going to do like testing equals true here. Um, Let's uh, let's sleep one second here, and if we are in testing, then actually in the send queue, do put some data there. So put, and some data which we want to send to the other side, and we will. This is what we are going to experiment with now. So uh, what we want to send is um, um, uh, let's send 31, no, 31 is boring, uh, A5. Now, A5 actually has a really nice bit pattern. If you look at it like this, bin OX A5, I have a lag on my sh shell to the machine which stands next to me. Hooray for Wi-Fi. As you can see, the pattern is basically a mirror-like pattern where um, like there is a bit set, unset, set, unset, and then we have the same thing from the other side, uh, set, unset, set, unset. So it's a nice testing pattern because it's quite easy to spot on the oscilloscope. So this is why, why I'm going to send every second. This is going to send A5. And I guess, yeah, I'm not going to do anything else here. Now, mm, in the send data, we are getting this data and we are calling this. So let's see if this, uh, the data flow itself, does the data flow in a single process, if it works. And uh, no, I don't want this, I want this. Yeah, um, it works. As you can see, it displayed something here, which is correct. Now, hmm. Hmm. okay, uh, now, I guess here I, what I need to do, first of all, I need to encode the data as a stream of bits. Second of all, I need to encode the stream of bits as the signal. And third of all, I need to put the signal um, to my, well, somewhere, right? So first of all, bits, uh, data to bits and data. Then I need to get the signal and signal is going to be uh, bits to signal data. And yeah, and then I need to basically put it out on the sound card. Um, here is a funny thing, basically. Mm, how do I, what bits do I need? I already told you that I'm not going to, to encode one byte using eight bits. I'm going to use actually 10 bits. And here's why. Um, when, let, let's assume, um, there's already some communication on the sound card going from one side and the other side just now turned on the computer, right? And well, the program actually for it. And it's in the like middle of the bit, then there's a pause, another bit, and so on. And it uh, immediately starts the coding, like this bit, this bit, this bit, and so on. And um, it turns out that it just gets garbage. And uh, because it's like in the middle of a bit, for, for example, uh, sorry, of a byte, a middle of a byte. So this won't work. Um, we actually need to get some a way to let the other side know this is the beginning of the data, and then uh, this is the end of the data. And that way, uh, even if we turn it on in this scenario, it will just get the data, but it will keep looking for the sequence which starts the data. Now the sequence of the start uh, to start the data should actually uh, not be anything which can be in the payload itself, the payload being the data we are transmitting. So it should be unique. How do we make sure that uh, uh, basically a constant stream of bits that we set up is unique? Um, 
and it's never, 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 never is impossible to appear in the payload because you know the payload can be anything. So why wouldn't the payload? Why couldn't it be um, the um, well the, the sequence which starts the data, right? And then then like uh, everything falls to pieces. So the way um, I'm going to to do it, and it's actually I think a pretty common method. It's not something I I invented. It's, it's pretty common is um, I'm going to start with the sequence. No, uh, let's start from bytes. Each byte is going to be encoded with 10 bits. Now, the 10 bits are going to be like this. First bit one, then the eight bits of the data, whatever they are, and then a bit zero. And these are the 10 bits I'm going to transmit. So um, each byte, each in, in the payload, each byte, it will have at least one one and at least one zero in the stream of bytes. It's like, because well, it's hard coded at the beginning and at the end. So I can make a sequence, the beginning of data sequence, for example, 10 ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because it's guaranteed that this sequence will never appear in the payload because each payload by design, by my design, has a zero here. Therefore, it's impossible for the start sequence to be mistaken for anything else. And I can do the same thing basically using uh, just zeros, 10 zeros, to mark the end of data. So it's going to be like this. When I need to send something, I'm going to send once, 10 ones, and then I'm going to encode each, um, each byte of the payload using this method. And then I'm going to send the zeros, the 10 zeros at the end of the data to mark that, hey, I finished transmitting and I don't have anything else to transmit right now. Yeah. Mm. Um, oh, I have a typo here. Uh, from Frozen and Parion. Thank you. You are correct. This was my mistake. Thank you for catching it. Now, um, yeah, so now I need to basically encode the bits. Now, I'm, the code which I'm going to write today is not going to be fast. Why? Because the sound card transmission is going to be super slow anyway, so we just don't care. Like, the code is going to be way faster than whatever we can transmit over the sound card, and sound card anyway. Okay, so data to bits first, mm, data, and this is going to be quite easy. I'm going to create an array and uh, I'm going you know, to, to actually go with constants here. So mm, start sequence is going to be uh, ones, I said 10 ones, right? It's kind of stretching it. I would go for 11 or 12 just to be safe, but 10 is fine. Should be fine. Again, I do not have too much noise on my cables, so it should be fine. And the end sequence is going to be 10 zeros. So uh, we start with the start sequence, and then whatever happens at the end, we just append the end sequence. And we return uh, all the bits concatenated. And yeah, I'm going to encode bits with text string, because why not? Because it's just easier to process. Whereas, again, my code is not going to be fast, it doesn't have to be fast. Yeah, just join them. And here for each mm, byte, uh, or character and data because data is actually a string we do for each uh, for I don't know bit in now let's call it i in x range 8 we get the bit and then you know we put it together and I'm going to start with um, with the top bits so the most significant bit is going to go first this is also something which you know you have to get right both in encoding and decoding or you will have like uh, re really not um yeah you won't have any luck otherwise cool so for i in x range uh, we do the bit is uh, oh, you know what i'm going to do this or ch it's going to be ch moved by um Mm. Okay, well, whatever. 7 minus 0. Yeah, 7 minus 0, so it's going to be 7. Then it's going to be shifted, so only one bit will remain. And I do need to do this with a bit. 
And I'm going to change it to a string because why not? Because I want a zero, a string zero or a string one. And yeah, and I'm going to append this to bits. No, not the but. Not the buts, bits. Yeah. And apart from this, obviously, I need to uh, do what I've mentioned, right? I need to put the leading one and the trailing zero over as well. So this append a leading one at the beginning of each uh, set of of each byte and the trailing zero. Yeah, and this is basically I encoded the data into the bits where the starting sequence uh, for each byte there is a, tra a starting one, the, the, the byte itself and the trailing zero and this should be fine. Cool, now I need to encode the signal. So we need to create this bits to signal. So the bits to signal and we get the bits here. Um, now I already told you that I'm going to mm, use the pause, this as a one and uh, then the pause as a, a separator and this as a zero. And I might remove the pause between zeros and one later on. Uh, sorry, this is one obviously ones and zeros, or zeros and one, but uh, but yeah, for now let's skip it. Uh, so now, mm, what I need to do is I need to figure out what's going, what is going to be the the width and samples of this. So um, so my signal width is going to be how many samples? Let's go with uh, just for tests, right? So just for testing, uh, let's go with, with a super slow transmission and super wide stuff. So I'm going to do with a signal width of um, 1000. And um, this is going to fail in a funny way. And I will show you why and actually <laughs> tell you why as well. Now for the pause signal, I'm going to do half of the width signal, actually like 500 because we're not. Okay, so um, here we go, where are we? Here, perfect. So yeah, signal, and it's going to be another array and I'm going to return. What do I need to give it? Uh, oh, right, it, uh, the read gave us this, right? So this is just strings. So I need to give it a string as well, which is fine. So I'm going to do join mm, signal. Now, for for a random reason, I'm going to start with actually a pause, and um, so um, how to do it in a sane way? Let's, let's do it like this: pause is is equal to yeah, let's do it here actually. Uh, so a, let's call it a a character, a pause character. Um, why am I using prefixes instead of, sorry, suffixes instead of prefixes? Start sequence is supposed to be sequence start. Yeah, replace all. Now the same with sequence and replay, sorry, and sequence, replace it with sequence and place all. And the same with this. I want with to be the prefix. Otherwise, it's not really nice. Sick. Okay. Um, I have this in here. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the character of the CH is going to be like this. And now the pause is going to be um, is zero basically. So uh, struct pack h uh, h actually. H is for signed, uh, short value signed 16 bit value. So basically, this H here is the same thing as this S16 here. It's like the same format of data. Zero, and then I'm going to multiply it with the width of uh, pause, sorry. Yeah. And then let's uh, call it something power for the lack of a better name. Now, this is a 16 bit integers so of the power basically goes from you know 32k from minus 32k uh, all the way down to 32k so let's use the power of like 25,000 see what happens 
the more power we use, the better the signal quality should be. But yeah, okay, let's go for 32,000. Let's see if it fries my. It's going to be like, I don't know, two volts anyway, so yeah, it shouldn't fry anything. Or is it two volts? Maybe it's a little more. Well, it doesn't matter. Cool. Um, so one and zero. Maybe the other way around. And. Okay, zero is going to be minus power, and this is going to be power. So yeah, this is just like a string which is uh, just zeros. This is a string which uh, contains properly encoded power as a negative number, and this as a positive number. And I'm going to use these characters to basically make the signal go up and down. So, um, where were we? We were here, and I'm going to, as I mentioned, start with a pause, because why not? And I'm going to actually also end with a pause, so append uh, ch pause. Now, for each bit, so for bit... Oh, I'm going to do it, and well, whatever, you can see here. And bits, if the bit is... Um, yeah, the code doesn't have to be fast, whatever. If a bit is zero, then signal append ch uh, mm, zero, obviously. Otherwise, do the same, but append uh, uh, one. And yeah, and add the pause after each bit. Okay, and this basically creates our signal. And having the signal, we need to basically um, send it to the sound card in the in the periods which are of this, uh, this size so 100 samples or 1000 samples uh, okay so i equals zero while i is less than the length of the signal sorry is this is this bytes or is this samples? Did I get a... This says 1000 and we got... I don't know how much data we got here. Did, did we... We probably get 1000... What This is the amount of samples. Uh, that's what I would say. So... And we already have encoded in, uh, it in two byte samples there. So... Yeah, whatever. Okay. Therefore, um, out p send, I think it's send, to send out to the south sound card, um, we send data. And the data is actually signal from i multiplied by 2000. Why 2000? Oh, actually period. Uh, two. two because two bytes per sample, right? 16 bits, two bytes. And the same thing here, just i plus one. So we basically grab to almost two kilobytes of data here, and if data um, length of data is actually less than this, um, because it could be less, right? We could encode something and just have like 500 bytes, and we are missing um, well more data in this case. I'm going to um, to to, to uh, justify justify it to with zeros basically so data is going to be with l just i think uh a a a uh, l just to 10 with zeros yeah that's that's what i want it, it basically fills with zeros up to the length of 10. l just with uh, up to the length of period times two with zeros because zeros again it's just the pause it's like no signal and send it. I'm not sure if this is blocking. I hope this is blocking, actually. And yeah, and this actually sent the data. Um, let's see if this works. I guess we can print the bits out just to see how they how they look, and also data. Okay. Cool. Now let's go here. Hmm and running it and it says it doesn't have a true bit send uh, does it have write then this is exactly how you don't write right okay okay so let's uh, let's uh, oh something is going on on the oscilloscope right um 
first of all, let's see if this is encoded correctly. 10 ones, yeah, it looks like this. These are the 10 ones, then the leading one here, and then we get 01. Oh no, this is the leading one, sorry, this is the leading one, this is already the, the payload. 1010, um, 0101, find when the trailing zero here. This is our data, by the way, the trailing zero after the each byte, and then after each packet, we get this. This is fine. Yeah, it looks perfect. And yeah, so let's look at the oscilloscope, what's, uh, what is actually going on there. Uh, it's still transmitting the data because uh, given that we set the size to be like super long, it's going to take a while to send this. So I'm going to do some settings. First of all, the frequency, I want to make it way slower. So we actually see the signal. Yeah. Okay, so here is our signal and the signal doesn't really look the way it should look. Um, I would say so. Yeah, it's just sending zeros and ones. Um, let me see what... Oh, maybe this is just the way the oscilloscope sh shows it. So let me change the time scale a lot and see what's happening here. No, it, it looks like it constantly sends some data. This isn't what it should be happening. So I'm going to kill the thread and the thread doesn't really want to be killed oh I know guess what guess who forgot to increment the I by one um, no and the I shouldn't be even incremented by one this is really wrong um, I'm going to fix it in a while before I fix it I need to kill this so p grab Python mm, yeah. kill dash nine thank you goodbye uh, I forgot to increment i, and this is a while, not a for loop. This is the mistake I do every time. Like, seriously, I do it every time. I do not need to do this. I do not need to multiply it because I want to do this. I want to increment it by this amount. And i plus 1, this is not correct. Yeah, this is i plus this. This is good now. Yeah. So, again, sending it. Um, did you actually see the code which I fixed? Yeah, you did. Okay, because I forgot I have the oscilloscope here. And yeah, now sending the data. Okay, something's going on, and this is this is way better. So let's see if it actually s sends the correct data. Now, how do I do it? I need to change my trigger to channel to the second channel. Okay, I'm going to make the this window even bigger for now while playing with oscilloscope yeah. okay and now I need to set my trigger yeah let's set the trigger here okay now um, I guess the data is a little too yeah, we're sending too much data. Uh, we should be sending the data slower. So I'm going to send the data every every five seconds because I want to actually look at the data. Okay, and yeah, here we go. So how did it? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Got it. Now we can inspect the data. So what do we have here? These would be, can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. The trailing ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now we have the lead, leading one of the bit, like right on the, on the center of the screen. And this is the data itself. So there is a one zero one zero, which is the A hexadecimal, and then there is the yeah the zero and one. And this this looks fine. And then we have a trailing zero and the trailing zeros, and it should go back to the the base signal level, which is fine as well. So it's it seems we are sending this correctly. Now let's see if we are sending this correctly on the on the other. A network card as well so I'm going to connect to the other computer and try to send it 
there as well. Cool. So, um, SSH to daemon. Here we go. Python sound card. I ignore the, the errors. Okay, and uh, run. Okay, I'm going to change the trigger to actually trigger on the... Um, is it sending anything? It might be sending actually, but my trigger is... Yeah. Let's change the trigger to channel one. Okay, and I'm going to move my trigger, I guess here. Now it doesn't look like it's sending anything. Why isn't it sending anything? Well, the obvious, obvious answer here is that it actually hates me. I'm going to check if, uh, yeah, the connection looks fine. Hopefully I didn't short anything out and burned my sound card, but uh, yeah, let's connect to daemon from another console and see if we have everything properly set up there. So SSH uh, yeah. and also mixer. Oh, you cannot see anything I'm doing, but that doesn't matter. Let make let's make it a little smaller now for the because I want to show you the also mixer. Okay. Uh, oh, master is muted. That's good news. Because if it wouldn't be muted, I would be really panicking now. Unmuting. Does it work? Oh, front is muted, muted as well. So I'm un unmuting. And come on, come on. Mm, do I have anything else which I need to unmute? Hmm. Mm. I don't know, do I need to unmute this? No, this isn't doing anything. By the way, do you want to hear how the signal actually sounds? You probably don't, but you can... Um, I, will, I will actually give you a sample later on. This is not muted, maybe one of these. Hmm, hmm. Yeah, I do not see the heartbeat signal, basically. This is muted, muted, muted. Uh, rear mic. Beep is disabled, that's good. Line was line. Oh, whoa. Ah, so here we go. We have some traction here. Okay, yeah. So line, for some reason, I have it connected to... I thought it was the front. I can mute front, I guess. No, I cannot mute front. Okay, so unmute front. Okay, here we go. So let's go back to the oscilloscope because this is really funny and I want to show it to you. So okay, I'm going to make it like, just grab a signal frame for us that we could analyze. Okay. And I'm going to zoom the signal. Here we go. Now. Um, as you can see, the signal doesn't really look anything like it. Um, well, uh, as w w what we had, right? So the signal looks like this. It's, um, let me make this a little smaller and do some drawing over here. I guess you can exit this already. Yeah. It's like, um, we have the base signal, then it goes properly goes to zero. And then it suddenly goes like this. Now what's up with that? The reason is, which uh, actually Serge uh, Q3K explained to me, is that, mm, yeah, I actually had this behavior too. Uh, I figured out that is the um, high pass filter. And when you know that it's a high pass, high pass filter, it's quite obvious. Now Serge told me that a, a high pass filter is added to proper to good sound cards at the exit to basically keep make sure that the, uh, the, you know, the zero signal is as zero, is as zero, um, because that's not the case for the um, blue one, and in the blue one that means we, is, and we can see from the signal itself, we do not really have a, 
uh, a high pass filter. Now what the high pass filter does is basically um, it filters out all the low frequencies. So the low we, ha we have low frequencies of signal right now because I did make the signal really wide, right? Like each one zero is really wide. So it basically thinks, uh, no, it's not really a signal. It's actually just something we need to correct because the base value of the signal isn't at zero and this is what it does, right? And yeah, this totally screws up our signal now. Thankfully, a proper way to fix it, well, not really proper way, but well, doing networking over a, net, uh, a sound card isn't proper in the first place. But one way to fix it is just to increase the frequency. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to close this and I'm going to increase the frequency. So uh, and to increase the frequency of a signal, I just need to, you know, make the, the zeros and one shorter. So I'm going to make them um, 100 samples uh, instead of uh, 1000 samples. And this maybe should be even enough to mm, for it to, to work. So, okay, let's do this. Now I'm going to click run on the oscilloscope. I have uploaded it and I'm just going to run it on the yellow signal on the yellow uh, network card. And let's, uh, let's just show you the oscilloscope again. Here we go. And is it doing anything? Oh, it's auto, but I don't see it doing anything. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Did something change with, uh, with, uh, no, this is fine. This is Demon, this is Elias, or is this, yes, that's true. And let's look at the Alsa mixer again. Did something mute when I exited? Um, you know what? I'm going to actually do this as well. Uh, like run it on the on the other channel just to see if any we have any. Oh, there, there was a flicker or something. Okay, why isn't this catching the signal? Please catch it. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, let's just go through it. I guess we will have to increase the frequency a little. It's, it's better than it was, but I guess we have to increase the frequency even a little more. So let's uh, let's do it. Did I save it and upload it? I'm just going to double check if I actually. But you know what? Let's do let's do ten. Uh, no, let's do twenty. I'm a little afraid of going so low. Twenty and ten. Okay. And start and let's switch to single. Um, why isn't it catching my signal? I'm going to run it on the second PC as well. Okay, here we go. So it's a little better now already. Mm, it isn't great by any means, you know, the signal, but we can at least, we are pretty convenient where the ground is and when the, where everything is. So the signal looks way better, I would say. Okay. Yeah, I guess we can work with that. Um, what we can do, okay, now, um, there's another thing here, let's maybe, I'm going to increase the frequency a little more, and then we are going to start decoding the signal. So I'm going to go with 10 and 5, and I'm going to try this with, you know, more samples per second, I'm not sure if this is even, oh, the set, wait, wait, wait. The samples per second should be set here, and the period size should be set here. Okay. Saved. Now, single mode on the oscilloscope, and run it. Okay. Yeah, the signal looks rather fine now. Let's, I'm going to hide the, the second channel for a second. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, the pause isn't the greatest, but it's pretty pretty obvious it is there. Maybe I should make it a little bit longer, like 8 here. And we can tweak it later on. So, we can get to the coding, I guess. So let's get to the coding. I'm going to keep the window here. Yeah, and I'm going to shut it down for, for now. Um, cool. So, how do we decode it? Uh, well, it's actually both complicated and easy. Uh, what we should do is because you know, the level might change of how, what this... Because it's complicated, right? What we see on the oscilloscope isn't what we are going to see in the program. Because in the program, it goes through the sound card. And the sound card, you know, has the analog to digital converter. And uh, it might just give us different values. Or might, might see something uh, due to the sampling rate, which we don't see on the oscilloscope. Given this... Um, we will probably have to write something which calibrates the signal, as in the text where is the, mm, the top of the signal, the text where is the bottom of the signal, and therefore the text where is the zero for the signal as well. Um, we can help this a little by somewhat frequently sending a signal which will just be used for calibration and nothing more. So a signal which is like, uh, this, for example, um, or with pauses. So we basically are going to send uh, 010101. This isn't a valid start sequence. This isn't a valid end sequence. So it will not trigger any data um, packets actually, but it will help our calibration mechanism to actually work. So I'm going to start with that. Uh, what I guess I'm going to do. Um, yeah, I'm going to create a class. The class is going to basically use a sliding window of samples and is going to take the maximum and uh, minimum value of them. So calibrator, uh, okay. And mm, um, I guess count for like how many, how many, what's the size of a window we want to have? This should be fine, like one second worth of, of data should be fine. Mm, so samples, and you're going to get, I oh know this is just going to be this, and uh, self count. Yeah. Okay, now we need two functions, basically we want to append data to it, so append, and samples, and this is going to be like, pretty easy self samples extend like add the new samples to this and then basically cut it down to just the right amount of samples we need so self and by, by the way I'm going to treat the samples as decoded samples already so uh, um, samples is going to oh I'm, I'm going to delete Mm, so I'm going to delete the samples up to whatever is the self count. Yeah, this is, uh, let me show you how it works actually. Let's assume that I have a list called A of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now I want to only leave the last three elements of the array. Uh, or like last two elements, last two elements, same. I need to delete the first four elements and to do it I can just do like... Uh, mm, yeah, it basically means like... Um, no wait, I need to do it the other way around. Like delete everything up to the two last elements. And yeah, it leaves me with two last elements. So I do have this... Uh, do, do I have the... Yeah, I have the back here now. And this gives me actually a sliding window of where at the bottom I always have at least, uh, well, at most, this amount of samples. Cool, and now I guess I can do some, like, get levels for me, right? Uh, which will return the maximum and minimum, actually. Mm. 
So is there any fancy way to do it? Well, let's do it like this. If the length of the samples, if how many samples I have is not enough, is not yet calibrated, and I'm not even going to try to calibrate it having not having enough samples. So if the length is less than self-count, then just no, like return none. We are not calibrated yet. We shouldn't get any any uh, questions. Uh, any. Uh, we shouldn't get any attempts to calibrate it, any data yet. Uh, okay, so the level for the one is going to be the maximum of the samples we have. Again, this code isn't fast, it doesn't have to be. Levels for zero is going to be the minimum of the samples we have. And the zero is going to be, I guess, like mm, in, in the middle, right? Is this fine or because no, is it fine? I don't know if it's fine. Should be the other way around. Mm. Because this will give me well let's assume that we have thirty minus thirty two thousand here, so this uh, this will give me sixty four thousand. No, this is not the I should add them and I should yeah, I need an average of them. Too. Okay. And let's start with this formula. This isn't probably the best formula I've ever seen, but okay, let's return it. And now, when receiving data, so here we are in the new thread. Ooh, is read blocking? I don't know if it's blocking actually. It's a good question. I don't know if this library good enough to so it was Python P also sound no also sound uh, also audio okay is there any documentation for this pcm objects uh, read uh, blocks okay it blocks uh, if it blocks then I don't actually need any sleeps in this so this is not needed so input read the data so samples is this now I want to decode it and to decode it um, oh by the way mm, I think there was something it will return zero so like uh, count mm. oh, okay this data is lost it's good to know um, so print if count is less than zero or it's like zero then print like error data or warning actually data lost try bigger period size yeah and continue now we can decode the samples so samples is equal to um unstruct unpack and we need to unpack how many samples. Uh, I do hope the, the samples are actually, you know, in words. Yeah, they, they need to be in words. So H, and I think it works like this. Uh, unpack. If I do two, I seriously should use we have our console for this, whatever. To H, and I give it like a, a B, B. It should actually, yeah. Um, so the, the number here tells how many items to the code. And I'm just going to use a format here and do len of the samples divided by two. So it will decode all the samples at the, at the same time. So I don't have to do actually a for, a for loop. A for loop. Yeah. So I do have the samples now, and what I need to do now is uh, for my calibrator, like let's call it calib, I need to add the samples to it to make sure it's calibrated. Mm, so calib append samples. And now I need to uh, get the levels. So it's going to be level. Okay, mm, calib. Oh, uh, wait, that's wrong. Okay. 
Yeah, this is correct. Yeah. If res is none, it means I'm not calibrated yet. So... Hmm. No. Okay, and continue. We continue until, you know, we get one second of data, but that will, it will actually like display the, the warning 44 times. That's a little too much. Let's, let's skip this warning. And, but I guess we can print whatever is the level of zero and one. We can print the levels just to see where we are at. And uh, this is a good moment to actually check if, it, if anything works. So running, yeah, and the values, are, as you can see, are rather small here because there is no, no signal being sent, right? And now I started the other part, which is going to send the signals. And yeah, as you can see, it's calibrated, but then it loses calibration, right? Um, so because it's losing calibration, um, I probably need to do the thing which I said before, which is if you don't have any data to send, then just send like zero and one just like to calibrate the signal. So here, send data, uh, yeah. If there is no queue, if the queue is empty, then we actually are going to send data and we are going to send, no, we are not going to do the send data, the full send data I want to. Oh, I'm, by the way, we do not need the debug print here. I want to send the bits already. So how to do it, how to inject like um, bits is none. Okay, if bits is none, then convert it. Otherwise, just use the bits you got, which is fine because here I can do, I can put none in data and I can put the bits I want to send and I want to send like 0101. Just, you know, to keep the the oscilloscope busy and I want to do it quite frequently actually. Uh, this is ten, 10 times a second. 10 times a second should be fine. Yeah, this should be fine. So let's just stick with that. And this is just again a calibrating signal. Like, uh, yeah, calibrate the other side. Sweet. So having this, I can send this again. And now it should actually, yeah, it should be calibrated perfectly. Let's see on the oscilloscope because it's not running. So let's run it. I'm going to again display the both signals. Yeah, uh, the thing which you, um, uh, let's, let's see. Yeah, okay. Here we go. The thing which you see here is the calibrating signal. It's not the data which is being sent, it's the calibrating signal, right? Let's move it and zoom it. Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm losing some, but there is some noise on the signal. I wonder why, why is there noise on my signal? I don't like the noise on my signal. For the time being, I'm going to, I guess, switch to the 40 for this frequency. Let's see if on this frequency I actually get off, so, uh, single. Yeah, where is this peak? Where is this data loss coming from? I don't know if you can see it, but like the the, mm, the little yeah, actually I can <laughs> I can use my hand to show it. Yeah, this line like where is this coming from? I don't know, but we do have to take it into account when writing the, mm, the crypto. Okay, we are well calibrated now, which is which is a good thing. So I guess we can make the window a little smaller again. And we can continue with with the coding. So we have we are calibrated now, and uh, what I guess I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a state machine. Now a state machine is going to be uh, it's going to basically assume that the signal at the beginning is zero, like on the zero level, right? And then if uh, signal goes like changes one direction or the other it will start gathering samples and then when the signal goes back to zero for some amount of time a couple of samples at least it will assume that uh, yeah we need to check whether that was a zero or a one and yeah and go back to basically the, the zero state so yeah 
basically these will be the states. Now uh, one more thing here is actually if um, level zero is mm, so this is the absolute value like abs level zero if it's less than uh, yeah this much uh, let's do power by two maybe or the same happens to to the other level that means we are not really calibrated so yeah so continue because if we, we would be calibrated then uh, the power would be quite high as you could as you could see here right okay cool now um, what do we know, need to do now we need to actually gather the signal and decode it so let's do create one for bits and array and for samples uh, Maybe let's call it state, and the state is going to be, I will have several states, like state gather, or wait, or whatever, let's call it wait, zero, and then a state mm, signal when it gets the ones or zeros. And it's at the beginning, and the state wait, and if we are in the state of waiting, then uh, two things might happen. One thing which will happen, uh, let's maybe call it covered. Okay, no, covered is this. Uh, if we are, you know, um, got a level which is the sample. Uh, oh, actually, wait, this isn't correct. We need to go iterate over samples. So if sample and samples, yeah. If we are in the waiting state, then if we got um, the signal, the sample is higher than, um, we need detection levels like that. This is basically will be half of, uh, of the power which we calibrated to, to detect it. But we can tweak it later on. It's a lot of, about tweaking. Okay, so if the sample is uh, larger than detection of one or uh, sample is less than detection of zero, we can add it, we can change the state to actually gathering the state, the signal state, state signal. And we can to the gathered uh, samples append the sample. And we can, yeah, like continue. Now we can continue one way or the other, actually. Yeah. Now, if the state actually changed to state signal, we need to do a couple of things. Um, first of all, now we are in the, you know, mm, already something happened and we are here, like somewhere here the signal is going and we are monitoring for a change which falls back to zero. So, if the sample is more than, it's actually less than that one, and it's, uh, it boils down into the zero area, right? Or, it, and it's uh, more than that zero, so we actually went to the zero area. Here is where the most interesting stuff happens, but before I get there, um, I'm going to actually do it the other way around. If I'm outside still on the zero or one just like append it and nothing else changes and continue otherwise if i get here it means that it went back to zero and if it went back to zero i can actually start counting for how long did it go back to zero because i need a, at least a couple of samples where it um where it went to zero so let's do um like a zero counter here it's going to be zero at the beginning, mm, and here I'm going to reset, reset it, and I'm going to reset it also here. But zero counter, otherwise we increment it by one. Now, if the zero counter reaches whatever the I don't know pause is is uh, more or equal to whatever the pause size 
Uh, sorry, width of pose by two. Because you don't need to wait for the whole pose. You just, it's fine for us to just, you know, wait for a couple of it. Um, yeah, if the zero counter is uh, larger, that, that means we basically, no, let, let's do it the other way around. If this is less, then continue. Here, it means we already are in the pose state. So we are here and we detected that we, this is a pause, so we need to check at this, uh, take a look at this gathered data. And I'm going to calculate the average of that. So gathered, um, how do I calculate the average? Oh, the sum of this divided by length of this. And uh, the average will be, you know, either in the one territory or in the zero territory. So I'm going to do um, if average is l more than that zero. Uh, I guess I can like remove the gathered here, like we set it. Mm, you know what? I can actually, I should reset it here. So let's do when I'm changing the states. Oh, okay. That's way better. If it's more than one, then bits append uh, one. Otherwise, um, no, actually, L if uh, average is less than that zero, so the detection level for zero, then we append zero. Otherwise, we, we get like an, I don't know what we get. We get an error, basically. Uh, so we get an X. Let's do this, like print one, print zero, and print x. Okay, and now we probably added something to the bits and we can pass the bits which we already have to, mm, to a function which will see, hey, do we have, uh, or actually we can do it here. Like if um, the end sequence, so the sequence for ending, we don't care about the start sequence, we care about the end sequence. It's already in the bits which we got. That means we need to decode the data. So that means that we need to reset the bits, but before we reset it, we need to like uh, decode. Decode the data, decode bits. Okay. Uh, or do we have a function which is called this is data to bits? Let's call it. Um, bits to data and this is the, uh, the bits. I guess we can print the data here because why not and yeah this resets the bits which we are gathering we do have a bits initialized somewhere here right it's gathered now it's called bits this is a better better name um oh gathered is wait wait gathered is where it's the wrong thing bits is here never mind sorry cool so now we we have the bits, we just need to decode them. And we the decoding the bits is basically doing this, but the other way around, right? So this isn't any, going to be any magic. So data, and we're going to return the data. And um, first of all, if the sequence, the start sequence is, uh, no, uh, wait, not in bits, uh, that doesn't bode well. That means it's something, something's wrong. Um, warning, uh, missing sex start. Yeah. And we basically returned no data, sorry. No data for you. Otherwise we do a split. Uh, so we do, because you know there's the start sequence is going to be the end sequence at the end and the start sequence at the beginning. So we just do data is equal to this split over the start sequence and we get the other part and we split uh, over the end sequence and we get this part. What I've done here is basically when I have the start sequence, some data here, and then payload and then the end sequence and uh, well nothing here because we actually get it at this moment i split it 
um, using this token and got this, the first part, this one has the zero part and the first part, so I just got this, and then I split it over this token, and I got the zero part, which is this, and this, uh, this would be one part that is, is not going to exist. So what I get is the payload. And given that I have the payload, I need to do this for... Mm, well, first of all, I can do a check. If length of data uh, div divided by zero, by 10 is not 0, because I know that for each byte, and I'm transmitting bytes, I get 10 bits. So if I have the correct data, it has to be uh, dividable by 10, right? Therefore, if I don't have this, this is not 0, I get a warning. Um, data not by 10. And we are to none, sorry, no decoding for of data for you. Now, uh, you might be thinking, whoa, we will be losing a lot of data, but that's okay, because, again, I'm going to, uh, later on, do IP over it, and IP already has some fault detection, and over it I'm going to do TCP, and TCP has... Um, TCP has packet resending. If it loses data, it will just resend the packet until the, an, the acknowledgement is sent from the other side. So that's fine. Uh, the top layer protocols will basically compensate for low level protocols losing data. If any, um, we might not lose the data. Who knows? Cool. So i equals zero while i is less than data. I, I'm not going to forget it this time because I'm going to do this. We get um, um, that's, that's, that's not a good name. This is data, data. Why, why did I change it to data? It should be this, obviously, everywhere here. Yeah. So, uh, one byte. Uh, let's call it packet. I don't I didn't know what's the proper name here. I'm sorry. It's going to be bits starting from i up to i plus 10. Now, packet of... Um, packet of zero, this has to be equal to one, because we have the one as the leading bit, right? If this is not the case, we have a problem. Um, wrong leading byte a bit, yeah. And I'm going to do the exact same check for the ninth bit, which is the trailing zero. Wrong trailing bit. And uh, otherwise all the other packets are, are bits, right? So I need to create a byte out of it. So my byte is going to be int of uh, packet of one up to nine, but without nine, right? This works like this, uh, sorry. Mm, no, 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 I'm not using this one. I'm using this one, this one isn't laggy. Uh, Okay, one nine should give me. Uh, I forgot eight. Okay, perfect. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. And yeah, I'm using the fact that it's a string and I'm just casting it to a binary int. And uh, I need to change it to a character and I can append it to data append byte. And yeah, at the end, I just get. The data, this is correct, and this is fine. This should work for decoding. Let's test it. Oh, um, one more thing, but we, we can fix it later. So, um, I'm going to let this run. And I'm going to... Oh, perfect. I have a syntax error. This hasn't happened for a while, so it was the line. Uh, 127. Here we go. I did forget. The tick, back tick. Okay. So it's sending, and they claim that they are not receiving anything, which is perfect. Um, let's do. Probably made some funny mistake. Okay. Well, wait. Why are you claiming you're receiving, not receiving anything uh, correctly? <laughs> There might be some, uh, yeah, I know why. Because here, after we get, I need to change the state back to signal state. Uh, sorry, state. What was, what was the name? Wait, right? Yeah. 
Okay, this should be better now. Okay, okay. Okay, so, um, hmm. Nothing is being transmitted. Well, I can see on the oscilloscope, you could probably can see it as well, but some data is being sent. Oh, uh, oh right, it did get some data. So it gets some data. It's not a perfect version. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually go here and I'm going to do um, sys std out flash. Uh, yeah. Import sys. Okay, just to have real time feedback. Okay, so it's g getting the decoding signal, and every somewhat uh, a couple of seconds, it's supposed to get. Um, get you know oh it's failing hard like at the at the initial bits and this one this one is not failing it's getting the bits correctly yeah here we go so we have one two three four until here ten this is the um wait what oh no th this is probably one more Okay, so up to here, this is the leading one. Now the data, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The trailing and starting from here, the trailing zeros of the end sequence. This is fine. Now, why didn't it tell us that it got data? I don't know. Because it the, the sequence is there, right? So... Um, Oh, I know. Um, yeah, don't look. This is nasty what I just did. Yeah, it will be a little better now. Okay. Okay, now get some data. Yeah, okay. A wrong trailing bit, none. Okay. You know what, I, uh, since this is actually way faster now, I can send the test data more frequently. So I'm going to send it every second. So it, it will be easier for me to test. Okay, wrong trailing bit. Did I check the trailing bit correctly? Because I somewhat don't believe it, but it's the wrong trailing bit. Ah, uh, one... One more thing, actually. If I get the end sequence, I need to reset it. So, uh, where is it? Here we go. Here, uh, the bits are supposed to be reset regardless. Okay, now it's better. And, uh, no, wait, before I start, I want to check if I didn't make the typo, the stupid copy-paste typo I suspect I did make. No, this is fine. This is cool. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's see now. I think it's not working. Uh, like, seriously, not working. Okay. I'm not going to do this, instead I'm going to print the bits here. Just to see if I'm getting them set up correctly, because I'm starting to suspect I, I don't. So if the end sequence, wait, no, uh, no, this was, this was better, this was good. Okay, now it's good. Okay, wrong trailing bit, wrong trailing bit, but is it? This is getting even more stuff because it's failing okay. a lot, but we can get to it in a second. Is the trailing bit really wrong? So... How will it split? I know. Um, yeah, I know it's the problem. The problem is quite funny. The problem is with this here. 
it should be zero. Because otherwise it thinks that this one is the beginning of a start sequence and it splits incorrectly. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Uh, okay, now it thinks this is the... It gets this data too fast. How do I... How do I fix it? Hmm... Because now it thinks, uh, yeah, I should start with a 1 but end with a 0. Now we'll, it will be fine. Alright, th this is totally not working. I guess when I get the an incorrect read, an incorrect bit, I should reset my bits. Because if I don't reset my bits, then... Um, I will end up in this situation, and I don't want to end up in, in this situation. And if I get the one bit wrong, I cannot read the packet anyway, right? Okay, data not divisible by 10. Um, you know what? Do not print the bits anymore. Instead, I would like to know what do we get here. So print bits. Yeah, debugging, debugging. Okay. That's cool. So, we do not have a zero, which is the training zero, and this is because uh, I am an idiot, please do not quote me. Here, the end actually, mm, yeah, I, I shouldn't split by it. Because it, you know, there is the trailing zero for the byte, and then the end sequence, which is this, and it actually just splits over this instead of over this. So this is totally my fault. I know that the end sequence is there, but the end sequence is there too soon, as in, um, it's fine that the end sequence to be there. You know what, I'm going to actually change the leading uh, and the trailing bits. This is going to be zero, this is going to be one, and when I'm encoding the data, this is going to be zero and this is going to be one. The one will be trailing and the zero will not be trailing. This way it should be a little more readable and yeah okay perfect now it decodes the data this one doesn't decode the data though so let's uh, do a quick fix so this is alias right i need to connect to alias where am i connected here it's, i'm connected to demon but i want to be connected to alias so let's go here and let's uh, run our sum mixer when as soon as i get the byte decoding done it's going to take me 10 more minutes to set up TCP IP over it. The TCP IP thing is trivial. Mm. Okay, now some mixer uh, and capture. Let's see if I can tweak anything here to actually get it going. Okay. No, this is too bad. Is it running the new version? Mm. So it's not getting some data correct. This is too much. If I mute digital, then it stops working at all. Just somewhat weird, but okay. Let's get it like really low. Oh, I guess it's not receiving anything now. So it's getting some data, but it's not getting. It's getting X. Why is it getting X? Because I think the level here is fine, but let's, uh, in case of X, I'm going to actually print it. Um, so 
Sorry, where do we have uh, X? Ah, it's here. Okay. So in case of X, I'm going to print the average. The value. What, what did I get here? Because maybe it's like easy, easy fixable if we change the detection level. So yeah, let's turn this off. Yeah, so as you can see the the levels are rather simple. Let's change the detection to divide it by three and see what happens then. Okay, and now I'm going to make this a little louder. What kind of signal is it getting? What happens if I change the digital? Oh, now it's good. It doesn't affect, that's funny. I could swear it actually detected. Okay. So, uh, let's divide it by four and see what happens. Sorry, did I wait for it? What is the signal that is actually getting so... The average is getting so... So incorrect. Let's print all the... <coughs> sorry, let's print all the samples that we have gathered then. Now this is pretty weird. As you can see, I'm getting like really, a really strong signal here. And then suddenly it goes this way. Whoa, that's a really weird signal. I don't blame it for not, not getting it correctly. Going to play a little with this. Okay. Now this is even weirder. As you can see, I'm getting like both ends of the spectrum here, like the super high and the super low. Uh, sorry, the, the other way around. Uh, I probably should blame this code for it because I'm just like happily putting it in all the samples here, which actually meet this criteria. Um, if I change the detection level again. Okay, but this is not what I wanted to happen. Yeah, this is like totally not getting the correct data. Hmm. I'm wondering also what's the, like how many times do I get the zero counter to be reset? Well, actually each time it might, you know, just fall into a zero counter and we might be seeing mm, different signals here. That's pretty weird. Yeah, I think I'll go back to the detection level of four. I divided by four. If, uh, as long as the other side still works, that should be fine. Okay, and I'm going to do a funny thing. I'm going to actually note which side did I go... Hmm. I'm ignoring a bit at the beginning of... Uh, 
when receiving what and why does it does this work which bit am i ignoring so let's go here mm, so this is bits to data right and when i split this is the zeros at the, the leading zeros these are the leading zeros right sorry the start now is ones oh wait this isn't i I think I actually changed it the wrong way. Let me think if this is the logic is correctly. I should have zero as the leading bit and one as the trailing bit, but that is the correct way to do it. And I do check this and I do actually mm, and I do append zero because there are ones, then there's a zero and there's ones. Okay, this is fine. No, I mean, this, this seems to actually be okay with uh, in terms of this, right? Because as you can see, I am receiving this correctly. So uh, this does look weird on the other hand. This data should not look like this. So I don't, I'm not sure that um, that's, uh, that would be the reason why this is incorrect. Uh, I think the, the problem is in a different thing. So first of all, let's... Mm, so this is alias, right? So this is getting from the yellow, the weird signal like sound card. And I, I'm going to look at the signal mm, on the oscilloscope. So the signal looks actually really good. I'm going to hide the second channel for now, just to focus on the first one. Yeah, this is a good signal. I'm not sure why uh, it has problems of... Uh, cr This is related because it still has, you know, um, I'm going to fr change the frequency a little. I'm going to do the pause will be 10 with a signal of going to be to be 5. Uh, let's maybe do it 8. Okay. So this is the data it says it's getting, but this data is incorrect because this no, we are, this is not what we're sending, right? And it's correct to say that this data isn't really divisible. I'm just looking at this. Mm, you know what? I'm going to maybe change the amount of time I... oh wait, uh, let's do it like totally, totally funny. Let's do it like this. Okay, like the, the pause is now really, really high. And even with so high pause, it has problems with Okay, I'm starting to be out of ideas, actually, about it. Now, uh, let's keep going. I'm just 
just checking if I'm not shorting any signals. Let's see how it work. looks here again. No, the signal actually looks really good. Mm. I'm going to again change the signal to maybe 20, so the frequency will decrease. So in all honesty, I don't know where the bug is, but the bug is probably really stupid. And um, I'm pretty sure it's related to just getting the, mm, the correct, just getting the correct um, coefficients everywhere. Uh, what's the one more? I'm going to check one more thing. This pause now, this is fine. Okay, so I guess I'm going to change this. And this is the last thing I'm going to check. If this doesn't work out, I'm going to actually switch to the code which does work, just to show you how to set up the tunnel with this. And the, the code is really similar. No, it still doesn't work. I'm kind of at a loss here, because uh, I'm not really sure why it doesn't work. Uh, I am going to do one more thing. Here, I'm actually going to do a plan sample just to have some debug information. Yeah, I actually, in all honesty, expected more of these to be here, but uh, assuming that they would be. Uh, yeah, can I do like super loud then? No, okay, uh, let's just go with the code which works. Uh, the differences are really small, so I'm going to show you the... Let's do this, and... Okay, here we go. Now this is the code which works, and the, the differences are really small, but I, given that we are already 18 minutes after, the, uh, after the, the end of the stream, which should happen some time ago, I'm just going to explain you the tunnel interface and how to hook it up. Uh, so okay, so basically this is again using the Python interface, and I do have to create a tunnel, and the tunnel is... Uh, you create it just like this, like a Toontap device, and I want a tunnel. And you do have to set, you know, the IP address for both. Um, actually, you have to set on the interface the IP address for both the destination and the source, which is quite unusual, I would say. And after you set it, you set the net mask and the maximum transfer you need, which I do have set to 150. This is, you know, the maximum am amount of uh, bytes you want to set at a time. And this is actually fine. Um, apart from that, uh, the code in the calibrator actually looks a little different in the code I originally written. Um, the, this code is some, more or less similar. I'm pretty sure I'm using the same, same sequences for the beginning and for the end. Now, um, using the tunnel works like this. You can read from the tunnel, and this is actually if any other program sends something to to the thing which is on, on the other side of the sound card, it goes to the tunnel and you can read that data through the tunnel and you can put it to the sound card queue to, to send it. And this works the other way around identically, as in when you get the data from the sound card, um, so again, this is the function which is really similar here. This is receiving, 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 and in the end you decode the data. You just put it in the queue as the packet uh, at the receiving queue, and the receiving queue, you basically get it from the queue, and you just write it to the tunnel, and that's it. And what this does, it actually takes an IP packet and um, sends it over, over the sound card and dumps it in the IP stack of the other machine, and does the other 
way around the same thing. So again, the tunnel, setting up the tunnel is, uh, is super easy. Let's see if the, the code, this code actually works or maybe something failed with my setup. So uh, now I do need to run it with sudo because creating a tunnel actually requires you to have root access. So be right back. Okay, now on Eli Elias, I actually have a throwaway password, so I don't go. Yeah, and okay, well, it, it seems to work, actually. Um, I'm going to let it run on my oscilloscope with both channels. If we zoom into it, so let's zoom into it. Uh, you can see that I'm, I'm using basically the same kind of, the same kind of data. And it's already transmitting data, so let's just connect to one of the servers. Well, the setting for, for Alsa Mixer s seems to be somewhat right. Um, I'm going to spawn another terminal just to, just so I can ping one host or the other. Okay, so um, SSH into Elias. Here we go. If we do ifconfig, you can see that there's a new interface called tunnel, which has this IP address and the destination address, like the daemon address is also here. Oh, you cannot see it because I'm actually have my window here. Okay, here you go. So again, we have a tunnel interface and yeah, this is one address and this is the destination address. So if I'm going to ping the destination address, which is this, um, so let me maybe make this a little smaller so you can see on the oscilloscope what's going on oh you can see that there there is way more activity on the oscilloscope right now because it's actually sending the pings through and the pings are not working so i'm going to uh, try to play a little with this the packets are flowing but it's not working yeah it seems something with my setup just totally went went wrong because otherwise uh, we, well this code was working and as you can see I also I'm getting incorrect packets all left right and center so yeah this just isn't my day One more thing I can do is I can actually run Alsa Mixer on the other computer and see. So I'm going to disconnect from this and I'm going to connect to this guy. And I'm going to ask this guy, uh, are you actually sending um, the packets in a somewhat sane way? Like, yeah, let's just do boost this. Okay, disconnect, reconnect to the other guy and do the ping again. Oh, this is funny. Yeah, like the signal totally went off the charts, I would say. So this just isn't my day. Well, I guess I can write a blog post then and uh, let you know what was the problem and how did I fix it. But in all honesty, I expect the, the problem, the fixing of a problem to be like, yeah, it just started working. Hmm. Maybe, no, maybe the visit is too high. Huh. Yeah, so like this, just a trigger. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ping the other way around. So I'm on. Um, sorry, the tunnel. Where's my IP for the tunnel? Yeah, here it is. Okay.
yeah, just doesn't like me today. But it seems to be related to to the sound volume. I'm going to give it five more minutes actually to play with it. Just to get it right running. So yeah, let's connect to this. The fun fact is that it actually did work when uh, I did test it a couple of days ago. I was able to connect to IRC, but it actually took a, like, I don't know, one minute to connect to IRC and the initial lag was 20 seconds just to, due to the speed of how it works. Yeah, when the access starts up here, that's already not not good. Okay, uh, let's just finish it here because I see there are a lot of questions I'm going to get through. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get through all of some questions, and I guess I'm going to write a blog post about what failed for in this case, uh, which is doubly weird because I had this code running a couple of days ago. So, yeah, mm, I guess the lesson here is don't really, don't really turn off your computer when you have something like this working. Okay, um, let's just uh, wrap it up then and go to the questions. Did you try to connect sp a speaker with a signal? Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, just random noise basically. Doesn't sound like anything. Okay, so okay, let's go through the questions then. Mm. Perhaps an old and off-topic question: um, If due to Spectre, Windows and Linux are now in separate memory locations, uh, where and how are they referenced? I'm not. Um, I'm not really sure what you mean. So if I understand this, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure they are, they, like the kernel always was in a separate memory location now. The thing is that it was um, by usual, usually the kernel was not accessible. Sorry, uh, the kernel was not accessible. So um, because it was mapped, but not accessible, as in you actually had to be on the proper link ring level to be able to access the kernel. Now, uh, currently what they did is they are totally, uh, they, I'm not sure what, what was they, they implemented, but they wanted to totally get rid of the kernel mapping, just to leave some stub which would, when you would do a syscall, you would go to that stub and that would map the kernel again. And uh, I'm not sure if that's implemented like that, but um, yeah, I think so. So they would be in the same place, but just uh, not mapped as in not, there would be no entries in the, in the page table regarding the kernel. And where previously the entries in the page table were there, they were just protected by the, like you need the propanger, you need to be on ring zero to actually access the memory. <coughs> um, for someone starting in hacking, what path should they take to cover almost all basic contents because 
many things are connected and it's quite overwhelming for some to uh, who are starting um i would say start with ctfs or actually war games and go through like as many war games as you can handle do the low level ones the reversing ones the web ones the crypto ones and yeah after you do some of them you will probably touch on all the basics which are required so that's usually a good start i would say as long as both PCs are properly grounded, it's safe to connect them this way. Yeah, that's, um, I also hope that's the case. Is there any way to recover first block of a message using padding or a call? Uh, yeah, I believe so. If I remember correctly, the padding, using the padding or a call, you could um, uncover the whole message including the first blog, but don't quote me on that because the last time I did Padding Oracle, it was actually years ago. I got the same oscilloscope. Uh, did you use a uh, real hack on it? No, not yet. I'm kind of afraid to touch it, in all honesty. Um, will this be compatible with every sound card? And what sound card is in your case? Well, I guess uh, that question was already answered as in my two sound cards are not compatible with each other now even though they were a couple of days ago when I tested it uh, I'm using Realtek uh, L uh, well L ALC uh, 1150 on one and 89.8 on on the other one um, TCP IP is not a must you can use IPX and or other prop, uh, popular and successful standards hmm. Sorry, my voice is kind of dying. Um, yeah, IPX was a popular standard. Like back in the days, all the local area network games were actually running on, well, on it, on uh, on IPX, right? But I'm not sure that's the case currently. Okay, um, so next question. Is it possible? Is it possible to be done on Windows? Yes, and I believe it would be even, even easier on some cases. So Windows also has the to tap interface, but I never used it in all honesty. But it should be possible to do it on Windows as well. In spare time, I got a link to oh donation. Thank you for the donation. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, well, if it would be working in the end, it would be good stuff. I'm quite, uh, yeah. Quite unhappy about it. Uh, thanks, Pablo, anyway. I got a link from Foxtrot Charlie about the Mikrotik router OS based botnet. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool link. I'm going to give it to you as well. Here you go. Will you sign your book for me on in April? Uh, yeah, sure. Just bring the book. I will bring the pen. Why use variables if later in the code um, you use the values directly? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, I fixed it later on, uh, but good remark, Kelly. I see samples per second and period defined, yeah, but not used. Uh, again, that was fixed later on. Um, Liho actually proposed this, which you can see here, that, that doesn't have any chance of working. Sorry, it just it just won't work. Um, congratulations, you have just reinvented return to zero coding. Uh, yeah, reinvented again. I'm I'm not claiming I invented it at all. It's just yeah, it's just pretty an obvious concept, right? I didn't know it was called return to zero though. So thank you, Maros, for for that. Uh, Kwewe just uh, is just a letter Q followed by four voiceless, <laughs> useless letters. Your life will be never the same again. Yeah, I know. Um, I know that joke. Q. Hmm. Uh, what error connection? Uh, sorry, what error correction do you want to use for this project? Do you plan? So uh, as you saw, I was not doing any error correction whatsoever because I was counting on TCP to actually resend the packets, but we never got into that uh, that level in the end. What is the expected speed of your network? So, mm, 
the expected speed would be around, I guess, 600 bytes per second is what I would get. You could also compress the stuff with Zlib or whatnot before packing it into bits and try to send that or have like one bit saying that yeah, the data is compressed or not compressed. And that way it might be a little faster, but only for, you know, data which actually compresses well. Bit to signal, uh, no data, yeah, yeah uh, I fixed that as well. When you will make the stream about OS dev? I don't know, after ray tracing. Make the scope uh, display the period. Uh, it's not displaying? No, it's not displaying. Um, uh, anyway, I'm not sure it would actually get, you would actually get the, to see it on the camera anyway, because I guess the oscilloscope was a little blurry. However, I'm pretty sure I, there were 20 questions and I already went through all of them and now there are only 20 questions left. How is this working? Okay. Um, are there any plans for making Windows drivers on the stream? Um, it is on my list, but it's something I haven't done for at least 10 years. So yeah, maybe someday, but not in the near future. That's for sure. Hi, Gunvale, I have a question about Insomniac CTF, which challenges have you personally worked on? I worked on the, on the like three web challenges, basically. One was an LDAP injection. I don't remember the name. One was, uh, the LDAP injection was actually, actually funny. Uh, another one was uh, an evil with in, inside Visual Basic script running on as .NET ASP, sorry, not .NET, as ASP um, web server. And you could in inject the code, but we actually removed the, the, the dot. That was a funny task. And uh, yeah, and the last one was, uh, I don't remember what was the last one. I did one more. Mm, yeah, I don't remember actually, but I'm pretty sure I did one more. I also helped a little with, uh, with a couple of tasks, but yeah, uh, with one of the game task for us. There was actually a game in Unity which you had to hack and uh, we had so one flag was hidden in the roof of a building and you had to somehow pull it out and uh, yeah I, I kind of tried to help with it in the end what, what we did. Mateusz solved it by the way. Uh, we um, traced the API calls to DirectX and uh, from API calls we took the vertices the vertices and indexes into the vertex table and rendered it as and like converted it into an object 3d file and rendered that using the windows standard standard tools for it and found the flag that way that was a quite crazy way to solve it i would say for data integrity try in an uh well again it was on higher level protocols mm. why is the signal inverted I don't think it was inverted. Um, why did I type the root password with oscilloscope running? I don't think that matters. If you can get the root password out of it, then let me know. I, I will totally buy you a beer. He, isn't he looping audio back? No, no, I'm not lo looping audio back. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, I'm not sure how it was visible in the camera, but on my scope it was actually like the two signals were totally separate from each other. It might have looked like that, but it's just a, basically a race condition on on when the um, when stuff is is being was being sent. Uh, does it work in Python Python 3.6? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know which version I have installed. I have uh, one from a couple of days ago. Did you try to connect speaker with that signal? Yeah, I, again, it's just like buzzing noise. So I'm... I mean playing back audio from input. Uh, from line input. Mm. Sorry, you mean this? If this is it, I'm going to be really 
really really unhappy. Let's do this then and mute it. And uh, I'm going to switch to it. Okay, and I'm going to actually use my old code, not the. No, maybe, maybe when you run. Mm. Sorry, the old code. Okay. Okay, okay, and this is. Yeah, and it works. Yeah. Pavel, you're right. I. Yeah, that was a stupid mistake to make, but given that I already have this running, because this is running, this is exchanging data. I'm going to do this. Um, so it was working all the time. I'm going to first ping it. So what, what my what is my IP? My IP is seven, so I'm going to ping eight. Okay, and it works. The pings are going through. Uh, thanks, Pavo. I actually yeah, I had like totally blanked out about that one. So it it turned out I was looping back actually the the. The, the data which I received. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you, Pavel, and thank you, the other person who actually noticed it. Uh, so, given this, I'm actually going to enter IRC now. And to enter IRC, I'm going to do. Do I have a second connection to this? Yeah, I have a second connection. So, I'm going to do. Where are my notes? Here are my notes. Okay, I'm going to do this. So, uh, this little command is actually creating a TCP tunnel from this machine, the, from Daemon, to an IRC server. So let's do this. And now from on Elias, I'm actually going to do IRC. Uh, IRC, yeah. And I'm going to connect using the interface 133, which is again the sound interface. Um, let me make it a little bigger so you can... You'll be able to see the IRC logging in uh, to 7 and uh, 6666. Yeah. yeah, and now what you can see is actually the uh, upwards, you can see the IRC logging in and this is the IRC connecting and it will take some time. You can see the data flow here. These are, by the way, IP packets and as you can see there is quite a lot of data here. Yeah, so my code was correct all the time. Hmm. Okay, and I guess I'm going to change my nickname to gain sound card and enter the our IRC chat. So join Genvale uh, stream dash en. And here we go. I guess if you're on the channel, you can say hi. Okay, that was a stupid mistake to make, but I'm happy that it works eventually. Cool. Um, yeah, the lag is, as you can see, 12 seconds. Twenty-seven seconds, even. That's a lot of lag. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Then, Pavel, again, thank you, and thank you to the other person which uh, already said that I'm, I'm looping back audio. Um, Thank you for this interesting stream. Good luck. Um, take a pause, maybe you'll find it later. Yeah, um, thank you. Thankfully, my viewers did find it. Will you try fiddling with some other electronics in the future? Totally, totally, yes. Mm. Do you know why El Canto leaves Google? Yes. Are you planning to connect sound cards using IP over avian carriers? Avian carriers being, you know, the post pigeons that carry posts around. There's even a TC, the, an IP protocol over avian carriers. Um, it would be awesome if you would actually give the sound card to the avian carrier and it would take the avian carrier there, like to the other side. But no, I'm not. I don't have any plans to do that. So, do you recommend a sound card as a transport for my debugger uh, from honorary bot? Uh, mm, no. 
can we say that you successfully implemented UDP over linked sound cards? Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess now it works like fully. Didn't see IRC on oscilloscope before. Well, yeah, now we can see it. It's pretty cool. Uh, Gunvale, how to help you with uh, books giveaway? Um, it's not in my hands right now, actually. So, yeah, I'll my it should it should fix by itself in like uh, two weeks. What do you think about Ray implementing T TCP protocol as a personal project? Yeah, that sounds like a really cool learning project. I also want to do it someday, but never got to it. Okay, that's how packet radio network took like in '98. Uh, PREchion.com. Sounds cool. Okay, and that was the last question. So I'm, I'm quite happy we got it working in the end. Even if this is the old code, I'm pretty sure the new code works as well, because why wouldn't it? And uh, yeah, okay, I guess I can just disconnect here. Bye. Uh, the cool thing is actually that you can you can um, disconnect the sound card and then reconnect it and if uh, and the tunnel will pick it up basically so IRC would not lose connection to just get locked out okay so at least I don't have to write a blog post um, and one more question I meant how to donate a book for a giveaway or Kelly if you want to donate a book for a giveaway then ping me on on IRC after the stream we can we can chat about it uh, thank you for the thought by the way I guess that's it so thank you for being here three hours with me today uh, due to a super stupid bug which I made at the very beginning of a stream and but I I hope that um, yeah it was fun anyway to watch apart from that I'm not sure what the topic for the next stream is going to be we're going to yeah if you have any ideas then just put them in the comments down below and I'm going to leave you now with uh, with a blockchain challenge so good luck with that hopefully at least that works cool so um, thank you for being here thank you kshaku for being here all the three hours and uh yeah see you folks uh, next week and happy hacking and if you know polish then see you tomorrow as well bye bye and have a great evening i'm going to publish all the sources on github by the way i like in 10 minutes so so yeah, that's it thanks and bye bye here we go